Welcome to Linux for the Rest of Us, episode number 31. In this show, we talk about Linux news, Linux distros, Linux goodness, Linux tips, Linux play, Linux work. See, I threw play in this time, because I forgot that last time. It's basically a show that, that tries to uh, get you grooved in on Linux and try to help you out if you are interested in the subject and, um, you know, want to learn more, want to start using it as your OS and just or just play around with it. And to do help us do all those things is our Linux Maven, the door to door geek Steve McLaughlin from doordoorgeek.com. Hey man, how you doing? Hey yo, doing good. Um, there's one thing I'm gonna have to look up later, and I'm just gonna mention it offhand now. Yeah. It also makes you very good money. The average Linux administrator gets paid more than the average Windows administrator. I'll just throw that out there. That's a great tip. It is, and partially. To me, they deserve more money, not because it's harder, but because you have such more control over the environment, you need to know more and not just some GUI, that's the exact same GUI on 9 million computers around the world. Right, right. You know, which means no control, lack of control, and when you click a button, rarely do advanced techs or administrators to even comprehend what actually happened. <laughs> what on Windows? Yeah. I got to say, money motivation is a very strong thing. So It is, and I can tell you with uh, virtual virtualization taking off in the enterprise, they all run Red Hat VMware, and, you know, it's Linux. It's Linux. That's all I'll say. It's Linux. So are you saying that that's what the folks should learn? If they want to make money from Linux, they need to learn VMware administration, and Red Hat is a great entry point. The other place is BSD and enterprise firewalls. Because uh, okay. virtually every, let's say, I'll just say this, every enterprise firewall I've seen that actually works and works all the time is BSD. Um, let's just say I have had the unfortunate circumstances to deal with a Windows based firewall. And besides it randomly letting YouTube come through <laughs> or randomly letting people who are not supposed to have access through or stuff like that. Yeah. Besides that, it's worked great. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, it's a job. Okay. Thanks for the tip. No problem. What do you um, want to go over today? Well, what's, what's honestly, the there's, a, there's a wide sweeping myriad of things as as always. Uh, the first thing, I haven't mentioned conferences in a while. Um, we did get an email from uh, Southern California Linux Expo, mm -hmm. and uh, that is at uh, SoCalLinuxExpo.org. Um, of course, if you're not in Southern California, it's going to cost you a lot of money if you want to go. Um, but I can tell you, this is one of the higher end, I'll say, um, conferences. There is a lot of industry there, um, which kind of, you know, goes with what I just said. If you want to make better money per hour, you need to know Linux. Um, some of the companies there are IBM, HP, Rackspace. We've all heard of them. Facebook, uh, Pogo, OpenStack, Google, um, more and more and more and more. Um, MongoDB, which I'll say, MongoDB, I think, sure of databases. MongoDB? Yeah, it's uh, what they call a object-oriented database, a, I want to say object database, we're, Basically, it's not a um, relationship database where you have, for instance, a database and a state database and a zip code database and a you know, all this other kind of database that all link together in a spider web of confusion to a lot of people. <laughs> um, but it's basically like a flat file database where anything can be stored from a music file to an entire web page to just clips of words. And it runs exhaustingly fast because 
of some of the things they prioritize and then it's because of the things they don't prioritize. Okay. Um, it's great. It's a great technology that I think is only going to get bigger, 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 bigger. And I don't know of a single one that runs on Windows. I'll, I'll, I'll just say that. <laughs> uh, but this is a really good conference. I've actually had a couple people tell me to uh, SoCalLinuxExpo.org. And if you click on Schedule, you can see how unbelievably busy this conference is and how much stuff they have going on. Um, if you just go to there, you'll be dropped on uh, Friday, the February the 25th, which is the first day. And you'll see a bunch of empty spots. And you're going to think, well, this isn't as busy as that. What was he saying? This is the first day, the day a lot of people don't show up. It's the beginning days. It's where the hardcore people come in. Uh, if you go down to the second day, February the 26th, you'll see a oh, whole wow. lot it's all of filled. stuff. It's all filled, totally filled. Yeah, and I'll say the one thing that I swear caught my eye, uh, Sunday, the February, Sunday, February 27th, 11.30, uh, Century AB. I don't know what that means. That's the area where it's at. If I were to fly to California, I would fly out for that talk right there. That is um, held by L Larry Bushy, who is the host of Going Lennox, a very great podcast for people to listen to. I'll, I'll say that because they cover wide ranges of topics. I think I mentioned them before. Once a month, he's on Computer America, which I got to say, he deserves lots of money for the patients from being on that show uh but he is talking about how to do a audio podcast in lennox you know this might seem very mundane to yourself steve because you've done it you've been doing this for a while you understand a lot of the ins and outs of it but to somebody coming in completely fresh there's really things they should know before just jumping in absolutely i know because i'm writing a book on it on the subject there you go. And it's, <clears throat> gosh, I didn't expect such an undertaking when I started. I mean, there's, you, you do a brain dump and you're like, oh, I forgot about this. I forgot about this. I forgot. There's a lot of stuff. And if you do it in order and you do it right the first time, you get a good product. Doing it in right. Linux, I, th I actually think I would be very interested in this. Well, I'll tell you, the, a lot of the things that I'm sure is going to be in your book, and I'm sure that Larry's going to talk about, really isn't Linux specific. It's about how to make a good product. And then... He'll say, here's how you do it in Linux. Um, the best thing about Linux is you can do the whole thing, even to the hosting of the files, for absolutely nothing. You can have the website for nothing, the hosting of the files for nothing, the recording for nothing, the editing for nothing, everything you can have for free. Um, Sounds nice. It, and it is, which, of course, when something is, when services are, are free, it just means you got to jump through an extra hoop here or there to get it done. But it's possible. And I got to tell you, I love his style of um, uh, communication. I like how he says things. And that's just one of these talks. You know, I really kind of wish I had a spare $2,000 sitting around doing nothing. Or a clone of yourself. Well, that lives in that, SoCo. That would SoCal, work, but then, have, but then I would have to kill him. <laughs> well, no. <laughs> what if you, you know, what if your clone you shared not the knowledge? I would have to kill him sooner. Or later. Okay, all right. Because he'll try to eat my bacon or something. <laughs> all right, fine. It's a bad idea. <laughs> you know, I can't have that. That's my bacon. <laughs> um, and I know <laughs> if you listen to Going Linux, I believe even on their website, there is a link to a promo code that gets you a deal on entry fee. Um, but I tell you, most people don't even, um, don't even pop for the deals because they know all this money is going to productions for next year's conference nice. and to like buy the, a volunteer's pizza and stuff. Um, but there are deals out there. The full blown full access pass is $70. You can get in for as little as 10 bucks. Is, is this the, like one of the biggest uh, expos on Linux? 
or this is i'll definitely say this is one of the bigger okay. just because it's in southern california i mean you know that's where a lot of stuff's going on a lot of money's trading places a lot of companies are already out there so they don't have to travel far makes sense yeah yeah it's definitely one of the things that i want to throw out there and i'm going to try I really would like to keep trying to just mention a conference here and there. And if people send me emails about a conference, even better, mo better butter is the only thing I can think of, <laughs> you know, good move. <laughs> um, um, the next thing I want to hop on real quick. I first want to say I thoroughly just, I get giddy and like the hairs stand up on my arm. Just thinking about, Whenever any Linux user who's avidly using Linux for any length of time, whenever they install any operating system on top of any operating system, they always, without even thinking, just say, I'm upgrading my OS. It doesn't have to be. You're just putting a new OS on. You're reformatting. You're nuking and paving kind of thing. But they always say, I'm upgrading my OS. And that basically goes to the heart of, the Linux users typically have very positive attitude, attitudes about new things, about discovering new things, digging into new things, getting into new things, and just figuring stuff out. Um, so let me see if I get this straight, because you say it in your notes here. It's funny how all Linux users say upgrade when they install any OS over any OS because of lessons learned. Lessons learned. Wait. Well, this is uh, the... the uh, next line okay go, i'm sorry yeah so it, it's like it doesn't matter if i am running ubuntu 1010 and then i decide to install fedora if someone asks me what happened to your ubuntu installation i'll say well i upgraded to fedora and why do you say they do that it's because of the positive outlook they always have you mean they've about... learned they've learned from the older one and now they're just trying something new so it's technically an upgrade well it's an upgrade in their mind because they always know they're going to get new stuff, better stuff, fancier stuff, even if they're going to something like Arch, where by default you get nothing. That's an, up, you're, so you're, that's an upgrade. So they, do they say that? Is that the common? Every single Linux user I've known <laughs> or heard about or read has always said, I upgraded to this. I upgraded to that. They never say, I installed this new operating system. Or I overwrote this old operating. They always say I'm upgrading, and I, I just think that's great. <laughs> um, and real quick, before I say what this next story is, this is a huge lessons learned. Yeah. Back in the day, whenever we went to get any kind of software at all, we always knew you pick the box up, you turn the box on its side, and you read minimum requirements and suggested requirements. You always learned. You got to make sure you have this. It, it, but you know, but you really want this, and this will make sure it works. And we've all been trained to believe what that says is gold on the side of that box or mm -hmm. on the website. If it says it can only be this, you it, you think without thinking, I have to have that. Right. It's not always true. Big, for instance, I can run myriads of software, uncountable software, in wine. Um, and you know, so I don't need windows, you know, software says I need windows. No, I don't. I need a compatible windows stack. I don't need windows itself. So, um, the next story is it's a successful upgrade from small business server, 2003 to Linux. And that's quoting, um, and the lesson learned is this guy said there was a, a, a key piece of software that was absolutely vital for the business function. And the box, the vendor, everybody said th uh, this software required Windows and would only run on Windows. Most network aware software really doesn't need Windows. It just needs to be on a Windows share. And from way back, we talked about Samba. Samba technically is the underlying foundation framework protocol of sharing files, folders, directories via network paths. Windows 
is Samba. It, it sharing is Samba. I know that. Every network uh, tool I've ever used to scan servers at work always report back on Samba guest settings need to be changed, stuff like that. And I'm pointing to a Windows server. Samba can be installed on BSD, Linux, the whole shebang. And all you had to do was take the installed folder on the Windows program files uh, directory, copy it over to the Linux computer on a Samba share, and just share out that folder. And the software worked just fine. Hmm. Um, and this is a pretty interesting article. You know, it isn't like they're taking a multi-billion dollar business and they're replacing small business server 2003. Uh, the, the, this is a small uh, church, I, I believe it was, where they just went in, you know, the church was told they needed this multi-thousand dollar server and this, you know, thousand dollar software and this multi-thousand dollar support contract and stuff. And the church fell for it. When the support contract ran out, uh, a guy in the church basically said, you know, no, we don't have to do that. And he went and he installed Linux and he got everything up and working at zero cost. <laughs> this article is on um, ERACC. It's a blog, blog.eracc.com. The title is Linux Successful Upgrade, SBS 2003 to Linux. So what did he do? He basically just blew away small business server from Microsoft and he put on Mandriva, I believe. Oh yeah, I didn't post the link in the chat. Party foul on me. No, that's okay. I, I, I try to say it for the audio guys too. Okay, yeah. Um, and I gotta say, this is the kind of thing where you really need to stop people once in a while and question, you know, if Matt lived closer to me, he would punch me in the face for saying this. Once in a while, you just got to stop and ask, is there a motive behind someone saying you have to have something? Same thing if somebody comes and shouts at you and says you're bad because you don't run open source. They have a motive too, you know what I mean? But you always have to stop and question, does someone have a motive behind telling you what you have to run, what you, know, what you need to run? So I'm just saying, don't blindly believe everybody even when the software package says you have to have Windows installed, I'll tell you, with most of the Windows software I've installed for businesses, like uh, Peachtree, you don't need Windows. All you need is a Samba share. Really? Yeah. And, yeah, and, and run, it. It, run it on Wine? Yeah. No, not even Wine, just a Samba share. Really? All you do is you plop the folder in there and you... Let it go because every because the end computers are actually doing all the processing to those files. Uh, the end computers are Windows computers, right? And they uh, okay. access the database and they do all their changes. Nice. Boom, boom. It wouldn't shock me if Peachtree would run in Wine, but Peachtree is such a pile of poop. I wouldn't even want to. I got because you. here's here's, and I'm going to jump a topic here. I believe. Uh, yeah, we're going to jump a topic. Open source what it is, what it means, and a good way to explain it to somebody who doesn't really know a lot of what open source is, okay? We're gonna come back to the proprietary thing, but first let's just get a good definition of what open source is. Um, open, think of open source as recipes. We all know recipes, we've all had recipes. Mm. What if people who made recipes had a pat on that recipe okay microsoft won't tell you how they make their fruit cake you know what i mean <laughs> they don't right but then this other group of people make a devil's food cake right and they like it so much they have to apply some kind of patent to it or microsoft be able to take it and do what they want with it so they say okay here's the license with this recipe you can take it and you can make the cakes all day long but you have to distribute that recipe list with that cake. And if you make any modifications to that cake, you have to tell us what those changes are. Think of how good all the food in the world would be if that was how recipes were handled, <laughs> how you had to give the recipe. Like you went to a restaurant and you got some good food. With that food, you would get a little card. 
that would tell you the entire recipe and how to do it. That's what open source is like. It's when, a when did you come up with that? Because that's freaking awesome. I did. I didn't. I ain't gonna lie. That's awesome. Uh, I, I love that analogy. A guy in Allcast Planet, and I can't remember his name, and I don't think he listens. Good, because you might punch <laughs> me. I can't remember his name. But it is the most adequate. I couldn't even think of the right verbiage to search for this on Google. Um, analogy. That was the word. This is the perfect analogy I think I've ever heard in my life. And it still doesn't do it complete justice because there's still more things going on. Now, there are different licenses. There are BSD licenses. BSD licenses means I can take that recipe. I can change it to how I want. I do not have to show you the recipe when I give you that cake. I don't have to. Hmm. That's the BSD license, which a lot of people, and I kind of agree too, that's technically more free because then I can do with it what I want. Um, the other pool of people, they believe in a thing called copy left, which is not copyright, it's copy left, mm -hmm. which, which means any modification I make, I have to release back out to the world to let the world know, look at this change, great change, now you change it again, you do your own changes and make it even better. Um, with proprietary software, you have a couple people in comparison, a very few number of people compared to Microsoft, you know, that's a huge conglomerate company. It wouldn't shock me if their one team making Windows Media Player, hypothetically, is not as big as some teams out there making other media players. Hmm. I might be wrong. If I am, I don't care. But it, it, here's the thing you understand. If you have a group of people who are getting paid to get up, drag themselves out of bed, be in here by a certain time. Follow the dress code. Keep your mouth shut. Make sure you don't do this wrong. When you go to lunch, you better come back in a half an hour. And all those kind of stresses you have to deal with, and then on top of it, you have to be creative and create code. You're not going to come out with a better product because those people do not have their hearts into it. All right. Obviously, they can make good stuff because you will get a team of people where two or three of them will just be like go-getters. I want to go far in this company. I want to do great. You know, so yes, you can come with good stuff. But the majority of the time, especially with software like Peachtree, that I'm just poking on Peachtree because I can. But there's billions of these kinds of software out there where they have little itty-bitty teams in reality in comparison, making these little crappy products that really don't work good at all you always have to call them up for customer support and then you have to pay for customer support right. paying for the product was never good enough so you got to pay for support and secondly from my 15 years of experience of dealing with creating code modifying code tweaking code and then administering other people's code anything you get off the shelf from any box and you put on your computer, it will never, it is impossible for that software to meet 100% of your needs. It can come close, but it will never meet all of your needs. So the other way these companies make great money is consulting fees, which just means you buy this product for $2,000. Oh, it doesn't do what you need. Okay. You can pay our guy $1,000 a week to come down to your place and he'll modify it for you to make it do exactly what you need. Oh, and then when there's an upgrade, you're going to have to do that again. <laughs> so it's a never-ending spiraling of money sucking that goes on. And these companies have everybody trained from the ground up. This is how you stay in business. This is how you make money. Yeah. By getting people in this lock-in spiral of you need our software, you need our software, you need our software. Right. I honestly understand as computer techs doing business support why they do what they do why they insist on installing exchange servers and windows servers and windows domains and all this stuff it isn't because it works better it has nothing to do with how solid it is anything it makes good business sense more power to them if, if that's the way they do things, that's the way they do things. I personally like making products and supporting products and using products that I know is not going to cause lock-in. 
You know, I used open office for years. Now I don't want to use open office anymore. I use LibreOffice. Everything I ever created in open office works exactly the same and perfectly fine in LibreOffice because there is no lock-in. Hmm. If one day a business says we don't want to use exchange, well, you know, you mentioned how hard it is just to take Outlook Express and put it into Outlook, you know, or yeah. Windows Live. And that's the same company. And you have to jump through all these kind of hoops. Imagine going from exchange to anything else. Right. You know, you're going to pay hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars through the nose. With open source, all you got to do is look at that recipe card, you know, and you can say, I don't want to make oatmeal raisin. I want to make chocolate chip. And you just can just take that recipe and tweak it and do as you see fit. Mm -hmm. This is why I honestly believe open source is going, it has no choice but to win because especially with tough economical times, the whole world is kind of facing, you have entire countries jumping onto open source for the cost savings alone, the long-term cost savings. And then with that, they also get the control back. They can see that recipe and they can modify that recipe to make this better fit their needs. Hmm. So in the end, I do believe it's all a good thing. I'll get off of my high horse now. I know, that was awesome, dude. I think that was great. Well, it I mean, needed to be said. That's great. It's great. Great analogies. Well, and it's smart. It's a smart thing to do. And I really don't want to bash anybody who's a friend of this show or a friend of me because, you know, I have many friends in the business, in the industry, and that's how they make money. I'll just say, don't make it a long-term career decision. Always be open to new things. Always. You have to be open to new things because here's the gimmick. We all, we all both know, understand, believe, live for customer service. Customer service is what makes you money. That's what makes people come back. That's what makes people tell friends about you. Mm -hmm. It's not because you got them Windows 7 at a good deal. It's the smile. It's the satisfaction of when you leave, you know it's going to work fine. Yeah. That doesn't necessarily mean Windows. Just I just ask everybody to keep your minds open because honestly, what I did on over 150 computers, and now I have about 15 people who do not want to use Windows. This is what all I did. I installed Windows the way they wanted it. I went to night night and I installed all this extra stuff that took all this extra time. I did hours worth of updates and all this stuff and I got to how they liked it. I then partitioned the end of the hard drive and I just took 20 gigs with most computers is nothing, you know, with mm -hmm. 750 gig drives. Right. I then installed Ubuntu or Mint. I actually did Mint most of the time. Installed Mint. Then I disabled all of the repositories so there would be no updates. There's a story behind that. And then I modified the bootloader to say Windows is the default operating system and a wait time of one second. So to the end user, the customer, when they rebooted their computers, they would just see a screen for half a second, you know, and then it would flick off and Windows would boot. And then when they call me up and said, I'm infected again, you know, which me and you both know hasn't happened to me now for about a year. But before that, when it happened, I said, okay, well, it's going to take me a week to get with you. I'm a family man. I'm cooking dinner. I'm doing laundry. I'm working nine to five. You know, I'm taking my wife out to restaurants kind of thing. You have to wait a week unless you want to pay me double money. That's what I said. And nobody offered to pay double money. I said, now here's what you can do in the meantime. When your computer boots, Keep tapping the down arrow key. And I tap and say, what is this? I've never seen this before. I say, okay, well, now go down to Linux Mint and hit enter. They would hit enter. I would have TeamViewer installed. I was not making money off of this process, so technically I wasn't breaking the law with TeamViewer. Sure. I would then log into TeamViewer, log into their computer. I would change their grub settings to make Linux Mint the default boot order, and then I would turn on all the repos and say, have at it, have fun. You, this is how you can do everything you need to do until I can get with you. I had about 10 of those customers tell me when I was getting their computers, well, can I just use the other thing? 
<laughs> I was like, and I always went into it very hesitantly. And I said, look, this cannot do everything you're expecting your other thing can do in the same way. But it can do it. Most you of know, it. It can do line wire, but I will choke you if you want to do line wire. <laughs> I'm not going to support that. You know what I mean? There are things that are definitely not as simple as like the Roxio or the Nero suite to create a uh, picture DVD. Right. I mean, there are things like that that are not as simple. I'll say that. You can do them. Sure. Can this person who watches Family Guy and Jersey Shore do it? Probably not. So I would tell you, know, I'd be hesitant about that. <laughs> and I would tell them, look, if you're feeling comfortable with that, let's give it another month. And if you have questions... Don't complain and say, give me back Windows. Just ask me. You know, I can remote in. And I wouldn't charge them for this because I knew satisfaction was better than instant money. I knew it would lead to me to more money. And about 10 of those customers stuck with it. And I swear from those 10 customers, I've had at least 80 referrals. Really? At least 80 referrals. None of those referrals said, give me Lennox Mint. They all just said the same thing. You know, so-and-so said, I had to call you. You're the person to call. You knew exactly what you were doing. You could, you didn't even have to touch my computer. You could fix it from your house, you know, and, you know, that's true. Uh, I had a customer in Florida, had a customer in Ohio, had honestly a relative of a customer in Ireland. <laughs> and I just remote into their computers, do what they need to do. Put a link on their desktop. Here's to my PayPal. Bing, pay me. Um, and it led into more business. It really did. And, I, you know, it's just, and that alone, A, made my customers more happy in the end, and B, got them to at least experience what a virus-free, in quotes, environment is like, where you didn't have to worry. You right. didn't have to stress. You didn't have to fret. You didn't have to think, oh, my God, what did I just click? Oh, God. <laughs> No. You make Linux sound like a Hawaii vacation. Well, right now it is. <laughs> right now it completely is a tropic resort. <laughs> Before too long, that resort will definitely have a snake problem or an erupting volcano in the back. Might, because might, might not be that for, not soon. Well, maybe not and maybe not that bad. It might just be, you know, they ran out of uh sunscreen. But sooner or later, if it hits a certain number, it will become low-hanging fruit, and it will be more popular for exploits to be written for the Firefox Linux browser or the Chrome Linux browser right. or the Chrome PDF viewer, stuff like that. Right. It's possible. It's not impossible. And that's one of the things I've learned in the last two years is to never say Linux will never have a virus because there's only... You can never say never and never say forever with anything in anywhere, in any shape or any form. Hmm. I, I can say I'll never kill somebody. Well, tomorrow I might kill somebody. It might not be on purpose. <laughs> it might not be on purpose, but I might kill somebody. All right. Or it might. Or it might. It, 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 it happens. <laughs> and, I, and I can't say I'll forever anything because I'm going to die sooner or later. Yeah. No absolutes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, not even death and taxes, because tomorrow we could have apocalypse and we might be taken away from aliens and put in stasis. Which would be nice. We wouldn't have to pay taxes. Yeah, Unless I, the uh, aliens had ta their own taxes. Oh, uh, see, so. you had to ruin it for me, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. They would take it easy on sole proprietors. That's all right. Exactly. <laughs> um, okay. And basically, I have to say, if anyone wants any tips, advice, guidance on how to do what I said about the second partition, giving them the Ubuntu option, just write an email. Write us an email. I'll be happy to tell you. I'll be happy to hold your hand. It's not hard. The best thing, here's the best thing about Mint and U Ubuntu and all these Linux distributions. 99.9999999% of the time, once you do that partition and make it, all you have to do is image that partition. And then for months and months and months, you take that image, you put it on the next computer. It works. Video, sound, everything works. Hmm. You don't have to worry about, oh, this video driver, this sound <laughs> driver, this chipset driver, this modem driver, this mouse driver, this touchpad driver. 
99% of the time, you don't have to worry about that. And that's why sometimes when people say they have hardware issues, it's so hard for me to answer them because I haven't had a hardware issue in five years now <laughs> on my own stuff. But I digress. <laughs> I know. One more thing. No, I'm just kidding. Um, hey, this is your show. You can have as many I, more things you want. I know. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> um, the next thing I wanted to jump back to is games again. Okay. And I'll tell you, there is a never ending multitude of information and games that eh, there is no seemingly absolute no end to this no end to this period so i'll say this is a link on softpedia which honestly i don't like to cite at all but i got a link from uh black hammer i believe it was in the forums mm -hmm. um this is a article called best windows games and app that run under linux this is a wine thing um oh, so, so oh, some, there's windows games i see yeah so when somebody says i can't run linux because i need here's some examples world of warcraft 4 warcraft 3 left for dead team fortress 2 half-life 2 Guild Wars, Call of Duty, The Elder Scrolls, Final Fantasy, Counter Strike, Fallout. That's about half the list. Fallout Three, Fallout Three, Fallout Three. That's, that's pretty amazing. And applications: and, Photoshop, Flash, Media Monkey. Right, a whole bunch of stuff. And the real kicker to me was Photoshop. I had no idea any Photoshop would ever run on anything but windows or mac i just run gimp because they do some really funky stuff Re quick example cs4 is not on this list because cs4 i think was the first version you would install it it would actually modify your master boot record what because in the master boot record there's uh 16 bits for that to be there and um, every operating system only uses like two bits they would insert starting at the end of the master boot record a secret key so then if you would install true crypt per se that would encrypt your entire drive photoshop wouldn't work the whole cs suite wouldn't work because they were so dirty and underhanded they would modify your boot record thinking you're a thief <laughs> so that's why they stop at cs3 but i'll say yes the gimp i'll tell you now GIMP is the perfect tool for amateurs wanting to do professional work. For professionals, it's a learning experience. Do you want to devote the time to relearn it? Right. Because there's no doubt in my mind, 90 something percent of what you can do in Photoshop, you can do in GIMP. You just got to do it a different way. Now, here's the real plus to the GIMP. You have a scripting language. Our friend Lalo understands perfectly what a scripting language is <laughs> a scripting language gives you the opportunity to s automate anything you can do in the gimp if you take an image and you do these certain things to it you can save that as a script and then anytime you come across a similar image that you want to do similar things to you enact that script so you don't need to sit there for two hours Think, click, 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 drag, click, drag, click, drag, click, click, click. And you don't have to do that with the GIMP. You can automate it. And the real Photoshop people hate that with a passion <laughs> because you're stealing their thunder. They want to be those guys that stick their chest out and say, huh, well, you can't do that. You don't understand how to do that. You need a professional like me. I see. You know, comes back to the cha-ching again. Right. They want you to pay for everything, including something that they learned. <laughs> I didn't know GIMP had its own scripting language. That's pretty, pretty badass. I'm not going to lie. I knew it, but I didn't really understand it right. know it until about a month and a half ago. Um, I want to say it's called like Foo Script or um, something Foo, like Kung Fu, uh, uh, which should have caught my eye, but it apparently didn't. Um, where you can also download other people's scripts. Huh, that's so cool. And the beautiful thing is these scripts aren't like highlight this area or brush this stroke on this area. It's not like that. These scripts are like you take black background with white text and you run this script file and it will make 
it look like a neon sign. Really? That's so cool, man. Because it just, the script is add this layer, you know, take the highlight, do this, right, do right. a blur on the whole picture, da -da 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 all these things I can't understand. <laughs> but that's the kind of thing that I think makes, you know, GIMP more powerful. Right, but right. There's too many people out there with, um, you know, art brushes who want to attack me when I say that. <laughs> um, and I, and and honestly, I want to take a little time out because I said the word script. Everybody on this planet, I don't care where you're at. I don't care if you're in New Zealand. I don't care if you're in Jersey. I don't care if you're in Hawaii. If you use Linux, you're just getting into Linux, or you've been using Linux for 20 years, which of course you can't, but let's just hypothetically say. You always have those people, those friends, those family members that use Windows. And some of us, I like Linux all in my house, and I still have to know how to work on a Windows computer. I'm going to tell you guys right now, if you care at all about your time, and everyone knows, and our friend Chris will definitely vouch for this, your time is money. Every second you spend doing something you don't want to do, you should be getting compensated. <laughs> and my belief, honestly, I have never seen something make that ratio of time versus compensation. As little time spent with as much money you can make, I have not seen it ever being offered like this before. And that is uh, betterpctech.com. I honestly haven't had a chance to look at all his videos because I'm a busy guy. I've looked at a couple of them, and I got to say, like you said on one show, you like stump yourself in your head like, why didn't I think of doing that? Right. The real gem isn't the tools that Lalo does, and the real gem, honestly, isn't exactly the things he shows you. It's the experience he gives you of opening up your mind to to realize you do not have to sit there for three hours clicking through the same screen you've clicked through on 20 other customers in this last month. He teaches you how to take mundane, repetitive, boring tasks and like remote, even remote work he can automate. These videos teach you how you can do what would take you three hours Technically, will still take a long time because the computer has to do its job, but you could start it on 10 computers. Right. And while it's doing it for three hours, you can go to the grocery store. And then when it comes back, it's going to be done for you. And at the same time, you don't have to lower your price to your customer <laughs> because what your customer is paying for is not the act of you clicking buttons. Finished product, fixed computer. Not even that. The Customers paying for your knowledge. If he knew what you knew, he wouldn't need to pay you. He's paying you for the years of time you spent learning how to do your craft. You know, I don't pay a bricklayer to come in and lay my bricks because I can do it. I don't pay somebody to come in here and put up a deck in the back of my house because I can do it. Because I don't know how to do it. If I did, if I tried it, uh, my family might die because that thing would come down. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? <laughs> this is the kind of product. It's honestly, it's like your laptop videos, I'll say, Steve, laptopreparereviews.com, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. where you pay X amount. And if you don't make X times 10 in the next year, then you're not trying. Right. If you use the Lalo tools and they're priced insanely low, so I'm going to tell everybody right now, if you have any inkling of wanting to save time, when you work on a Windows computer, you better go now. You better go quickly to betterpctech.com <laughs> because there's no doubt in my mind he could double the price. And I can say that because I already bought my copy. Um, you, There's no reason at all why this should not pay for itself in less than a job, two jobs. If, if you price yourself fairly in the market value, like our friend Chris, you will make this money back on your first job. Period. Absolutely. Yeah. And honestly, I personally can't thank Lalo enough. If you go to the Podnuts forums and just look at, 
I am Lalo and look at some of his postings, you can get an idea of, to be honest, how great he is at laying things out. These are just PDFs, by the way, in the Ponot's forums, where he lays out step by step, here's what you need to do step by step by step to get this process done. The bonus is better PC tech. It's video form. Right. It's you can literally you can literally have two computers next to each other. And you can say, play. Oh, pause. Click, 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 play. Ooh, click, 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 click. You know, you can go back and forth and do it. Because to be honest, that's what I did with one of them. <laughs> you know, yeah. and, you know. Yeah, when, Bob, and he's giving them away. He's giving those, you know, he's the kind of guy that, that gives those PDFs away for free in the forums. Oh, so, yeah. Oh, yeah. He's, he's, uh, his heart's in the right place. But yeah, bo- bottom line is, he is not doing this because he wants to retire. Or else he'd be trying a lot more money. He's doing this because he would love to be able to enjoy a little bit of a better vacation without killing a single tech and taking just a little bit of money for people who want to learn these things. <laughs> you know, this is so cheap. I'm going to tell you right now, any restaurant, I could take my family to Denny's and spend more money. I could take my kids and my family to the Waffle House and I would spend more money there than buying these videos. <laughs> I agree, Dor. Hey, hey, man, you've heard me say it on the past shows. Yeah. It's good stuff. It's it's going to help any uh, PC technician become a better PC technician. So it's aptly named, and right. um, definitely uh, definitely go there and check it out. It's betterpctech.com. Yeah, and I'll say his main underlying strategy, I'm just going to say, as soon as I got into Linux, I asked everybody I could how I could do this same kind of thing in Linux. There is no tool anywhere that can do what Lalo is doing on Windows. And that's only because it hasn't been made yet. <laughs> but, you know, as of right now, there is no tool like that because I wanted to do the very same thing. You know, at work, I've used his strategy here and there. For instance, when I log in, when I show up in the morning, all I got to do is unlock my computer, hit Control Alt, and I think A. I'm, no, L. Control Alt L. Outlook pops up, new email pops up, all the from fills in, the subject fills in, the body fills in, and it sends it. Same exact kind of principles, only I don't make any money off of that. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So I, I, honestly, I can't thank him enough for putting this product out. I agree. You guys have heard it. Hey, straight from the Linux Maven. Check them yeah. out, and um, you won't be sorry. Yeah, especially if you want more time to play on Linux. You can fix Windows computers <laughs> without even touching them. That's a good you idea. <laughs> because you can sit back and look at your boxy box while you know that computer spends six hours getting Vista updates. <laughs> the, benefits, <laughs> the benefits are limitless. I know, but I really digress because I, whenever I mention Vista, I just, you know. <laughs> just puts a damper on everything. It really does. <laughs> um, the next thing I wanted to mention, unfortunately, I know it's only for Ubuntu users, Mint users, a couple di- um, flavors of Ubuntu, and I believe you can actually install it on Debian, and that is Ubuntu One. Ubuntu One is a very Dropbox-like service. It's the easiest way I can I- explain it. For free... You only get, I believe, two gigs, um, and I want to say it's like $50 for five gigs a year. So it's definitely not cheap. I'll say that. But here's what you can do with Ubuntu One. Here's a bunch of the pluses compared to Dropbox and Windows. Ubuntu One, for instance, I like how my Pigeon is set up, let's say. Pigeon is my instant messenger, and I love having all of my uh, – Friends in there, how I have them. All of the IRC channels in there, how I have them. Facebook, how I have it. Yahoo, Instant Messenger, how I have it. AOL and all that kind of, I like how it's all in there and it works fine. I can make a symbolic link, which is not hard at all, in my Ubuntu One folder. And that symbolic link can point back to my dot purple is the name of the folder in your home folder that stores Everything about Pigeon except for the executable itself. 
in that folder has every bit of configuration for that application. Right. So then with Ubuntu One, I can go to another computer, make that same sim link, and then after I install Pigeon and launch it, it's going to be exactly what that one is. And then if I go and update and change that one, it's going to go back and it's going to go forth. So then you're keeping programs synced <laughs> and configuration sync. And wow. that can work any program, including browsers. So with Ubuntu One, you can technically say, point a symbolic link to my Firefox uh, Mozilla folder, my home folder. So then every computer I have Ubuntu One on, it's not browser syncing, okay? You, it isn't like you're getting the same username sync, the bookmark sync, everything like that. No, 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 no. You are essentially running the exact same browser. The history is there. The password caching is there. The state of the windows is there. The open tabs is there. Everything that was there is there. You know, the, 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 this to me is the ultimate sync. And with that said, Ubuntu One launched a music store. Um, it's not as complete as Amazon or iTunes, but it has a large percentage of stuff I think a lot of people listen to, even Lalo and Kate Perry. But I didn't say that. <laughs> but um, with Ubuntu One, you know, when you download audio by default, it wants to put it in a synced folder. Okay. There's an Android app called Ubuntu One Music. There is no simpler way on the face of the planet where you can be in a, in a Linux world, you can purchase a song with one click. You download that song in the background. You then pop up, open your Android phone, two minutes, 20 days, doesn't matter. You open up this application and that song you purchased is automatically there. There's no sync that had to happen. There's no dock and no buttons being pressed that had to happen. There's no DRM you have to worry about validating and authorizing and all this kind of stuff. It's just there. <laughs> and this is an example of how people say, Linux, it just works. Canonical made this application and it just works. When you buy music, then you can get it virtually any place you want to that's really awesome i and have, I have rhapsody and it's very uh it's it, i love it but it's hinders it's hindering yeah i'll say with rhapsody i know two people that have it when it works it is phenomenal you know anything anything you can virtually think of you can get mm -hmm. and listen to bam it's there but when it doesn't work i know it does yeah seriously the app's flaky on, on both the phone and the computer but the library's there, but this this looks super badass. Now this is all, you know, like um, real music, or is this all like um, people who it, have released on Creative Creative Commons? I mean, not that that's no, no. not real music. I'm talking about like, you know, just like Black Eyed Peas stuff, or or what? Man, Black Eyed Peas. What you got with the Black Eyed Peas? I saw them um, at the Super Bowl. So. Oh, I know. And I'll tell you now, Steve. I ain't gonna lie. I didn't see them before halftime started. When there was like seconds left, literally seconds. I had to pick up the kids, put them in the car, drive them home. By the time I got home, <laughs> I half time was over. I didn't. I don't even expect you to see them. In your mind, they don't exist, and will never, hey, never will. I'll just say this: I saw a picture of them after the <laughs> their show, and those outfits. It's like guar all over. <laughs> guar, but, but I digress. It's more um, like Lego, actually. Like, okay. I, dig I digress as well. <laughs> um, the other app they have on Android, Ubuntu One Contacts. If you use the default email schedule contact manager built into Ubuntu, it's called Evolution. I personally am not a fan of it. I can't tell you exactly why. I'm just not a fan of it. But if you then keep your contacts in Evolution, this with with this application, you can have access to all all, all of your contacts too. Hmm. If you just go to the App Brain link and uh, click on the buy tag, then you can see everything created by Ubuntu One, quote unquote. The buy and, tag, where is it? Oops, I'm zoomed in too high. Sorry. No, that's good. You gave me the link. Where? Where's the buy tag? No, no, not the buy. I mean, I don't mean buy is in purchase. I mean the buy is in who it's by. It's right under the title of the application. Uh-huh. 
Yeah, then you can see that. And I can tell you now, this kind of thing is only going to expand. Love or hate Ubuntu, a lot of people feel very passionately one way or the other. Like him or hate him, I really don't care. I just like the fact that they're making something accessible. And Lord knows that I just got hypothetically punched in the face by Jonathan Nadeau for saying accessible. Because for blind users and uh, users that have vision impurities, it's becoming less accessible. But let's say for that guy who just likes to procreate with like 20 kids, it's more accessible for him to use. Let, let's just say that. Yeah, okay. The guy in the trailer park, that, that, that. Okay. Um, but I think, I think he'll it, forgive you. I pray to God so. Um, by the way, Northeast Linux Con, check it out. Um, they're making it easier, simpler for normal day-to-day straights, as I like to call them. I took that from Leoport. For straights to use an and access that same information to other places. Um, one of the things I'll just hint on is I hate Unity, which is going to be the new desktop for 1104, but I believe they're preemptively looking forward to tablets becoming popular because I believe that's a tablet interface. And I think they, with this Ubuntu One thing, they're actually hopping on the functionality aspect of the cloud more than other people are. I mean, Windows has a cloud services, you know, I can't remember what it's called now, Live Drive or something, but it's in no way integrated with anything on the computer. It's just like a place to store stuff. You know, nothing, nothing's integrated with right, it whatsoever. Right. And I heard a thing that said Microsoft Azure has some amount of users, some number of users. I'm thinking to myself, we're, this is the Microsoft cloud-based operating system that was created by the old Lotus Notes guy that, that they at one point said, this is the future of Windows. It's basically a dumb terminal that only accesses cloud content. You know what I mean? But supposedly they have users, and I've never even heard of this being live anywhere no. where anybody can get to it. I mean, it's typical. To me, it's typical. My and they have horrible naming. Horrible oh. naming. The yeah. worst. The worst. It either is hard to pronounce or does the word does not fit whatever the service is at all. Right. You so, mean like Surface? You mean like like Microsoft Surface? I mean like Windows Live. Yeah. When you think of live, you think, oh, what am I on a, on a live stream? Am I at a concert? Or what is this? Oh no, live means on the cloud. Wait, the cloud? The cloud? No. It's just weird. Live. It's just weird. Yeah. Just live weird. just means new, I think. Yeah, stupid. because Hotmail was Hotmail, and then there's live Hotmail. Stupid. Yeah, Dumb. No, I guess they thought it was a buzzword. Yes, so. Um, the next thing I want to hop to real quick, um, it's a link I stumbled across, and I honestly believe it's a farm site. Um, um, what are they called? Like farm links, link farm a, pages. A link farm. A, a link farm. Yeah. I honestly think it's a link farm where I found this, but I don't care. It's good. Um, the site is called warp2search.net. Maybe why I think it's a link farm. But it has 21 Linux ta, ta, um, ta tutorials, and they're really wide-ranging, I'll say. I mean, really wide-ranging. From um, quick tip, how to disable IPv6 in Ubuntu for better internet performance. This is true. If you do not have an IP6 enabled router, which nobody does, period. If you disable IPv6 in Ubuntu or Mint, you will see a slight jump in performance. Nothing great, nothing huge, nothing grand, but technically you will see an improvement. Um, native ZFS on Ubuntu is another one. ZFS is one of those glimpses into the future on file systems, I want to say. Um, we all, in the, who have experience in the Windows world, we all know about um, shadow copies, where Windows has a service running in the background that you really don't understand, but it's making copies of everything in key areas. So you can go back and you can look at previous versions of files and easily bring them back. 
ZFS has that kind of ability, but it's not a service running in an operating system. This is the file system itself is so advanced. You can install any operating system you want on it that understands how to write to ZFS. And you can do images in line or like restore points in line in the file system itself. So the operating system can be completely trash and hosed and you don't need a boot disk. <laughs> right from the boot manager, you can say, you know, restore my image from yesterday. Wow. Yeah. But the one thing in here that I definitely thought would catch your eye, Steve, it's the second one down and it's how to play Angry Birds on under wine on Linux. There's been, a lot of, <laughs> there's been a lot of wine today. I'll just say that. Um, and the one thing I'll say is watching the video on here, this is not an Angry Birds clone. This is not some Angry Birds like. This is Angry Birds itself running on your Linux desktop. Um, if there's anybody out there that really is a fan of Angry Birds, and by a fan, I mean you can't stop playing it, you might not want to watch, you might not want to go to this link and watch this page because then you might install Linux pretty quickly. <laughs> I'll just say that. Um, what, I was what's, honestly, what's the page? Uh, you're talking about the uh, warp link? Yeah, it goes to o OMG. Ubuntu.co.uk. OMG Ubuntu. All right. OMG Ubuntu.co.uk. I'm out there now showing a video. Yeah. And uh, and it's pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, the here's why it works with Angry Birds. There's really you only need single touch. You don't have to have multi touch. You just click the bird, and with a mouse, you can easily click the bird, drag it back to a place, and let go. And then when it's been in midair, you can hit the button to yeah, you boom, yeah, you click. Don't, don't need multi touch on this. So if you're really like habitually addicted on Angry Birds, and let's say hypothetically you have a one gigahertz computer that doesn't even run Windows good, <laughs> you might have an option to play it and have it run good with Linux and Wine. That's so funny. I haven't played Angry just doesn't know it. I haven't played Angry Birds in a month. Well, they just had a new one, you know. Really? With um, Valentine's Day stuff, I think it was. Then they had a Super Bowl or something. I didn't see that. I'll check it out, though. Oh, yeah. They'll do any... Uh, they they work very hard to try to make sure they don't get staled. Yeah, they, they actually uh, do. I even hit that. Yeah, they're very smart about that. They don't rest on their laurels too much. Not, not yet. Not yet. Not until they have too much money. <laughs> um, the next I wanted to bring up and I honestly know I didn't discover this myself. Someone gave this to me. Don't know who it is again. But it's called Noobs on Ubuntu. But it's not N-O-O-B-S. It's N-0-0-B-S. O-N Ubuntu. Uh, I honestly dot net. found... Dot net. Dot net. Thank you very much. I'll honestly say I came to this site thinking it's going to be very cheesy very vague um, and only really serving a niche audience. And I got to say, there's more than a couple of things I learned on this website <laughs> that some of it I might have known a little bit, but I wasn't really sure of how to do it or sure if it was even possible. Um, but there's things on this site from um, how to do custom tweaks to your Firefox fonts, update the in update the in uh, video driver to the newest version. Uh, one of the things I found very interesting was how to automatically disable comp is when you launch a game. Oh, cool. The only issue I've ever had in Linux with games is when I'm having comp is doing other stuff. Uh, comp is is that wobbly window super yeah. duper effects thing and it interferes with games i don't i i i can't explain how but it, it does um the other thing i liked about this site was it had a very easy way of looking at themes for eye candy uh plymouth which is the boot 
the uh, bootloader screen. It, it's the um, login screen, pardon me. The login screen and the like boot splash screen. Uh, okay. They also have videos in here. They also have galleries, which is really, I think, more like a desktop w wallpaper search. So if you're just new to Linux in general and you're running Ubuntu or Mint, I honestly think this site has some good stuff here. It looks pretty cool. Let me go to yeah. another screenshot of it. This is the gallery. Yeah, and I honestly like the simplicity with the site. They have ads on it. Everything under God's green earth now has ads on it, but they're not overwhelming. You know, that's the one thing I'll say. Yeah, no, the ads are they're, they're acceptable. Yeah. Yeah, now to say, um, I had a tweet from someone listening to last week's show where I was kind of complaining about those pop-ups that happened on certain pages. Let me make this clear. I don't run ad block because I believe sites need to earn something from me visiting them. I don't want to turn every site into a pay only site. So I do not run ad block period. I don't, I won't. I'm not making any money. So and it isn't like I have some vested interest. I just know sites need to make something off of me or else everything's going to turn into a paywall. Um, what I do run is I run flash block. There's a couple flash blocks out there, but this one enables by default, disables every flash on the page and you have to enable each flash thing one by one with those little stupid pop-up ads, they're flash. I tell you right now, you just disable JavaScript and flash. Your web browsing experience will be so um, friendly in the sense of ads. <laughs> there's so many ads you won't see. Now, with disabling JavaScript, there's lots of sites that won't work exactly right. And with Flash, of course, there's certain things that just won't run. Right. You, you know, I would say YouTube, but that's a lie. Um, Justin TV, for instance, you know, can't use it. Right. Well, the dirty trick with YouTube is if there's a user that uses YouTube and that's their primary thing, you can go to youtube.com slash HTML5 and there's a beta program where as long as you're using Firefox 4 or Chrome, I don't know about any other browsers, you can via HTML5 have, um, I was going to say H.264 video, but now I'm not sure, video stream to your browser without any flash it isn't the answer it's just different you hey it's, it's definitely worth sign just trying the beta yeah on especially certain video cards you will see an improvement over regular flash Sweet. as steve can attest to flash on lennox not good I, I ran into a couple bugs i took it hard on my linux machine but well, hey, you have every right to. Yeah, but you do. I, it was it was basically running full screen YouTube videos, but I could yeah. make them the size of the full screen as long as I don't hit click the full screen button. I'm cool. Right. Go for yeah, it. and this kind of goes back to you have some little proprietary company making stuff. You know, they it, it, if it was open source, I can safely say it would be running just yeah. fine. Oh, totally. totally. Um, and the one thing I wanted to mention that i can't remember you want to think right. of it i could read yeah. an email i love emails all right i'll take it that you want me to read it yes yeah, yeah, please. <laughs> this is from ray he said he's not sure what show he would like to ask our expert panel on his question so he'll leave that up to me i was going to post in the forums but i thought uh bluetooth might be an interesting topic for the podcast i was trying to connect my android tablet to my linux mint machine via bluetooth I was trying to send pictures from my Linux Mint machine to my Android tablet. I could not seem to get past the paired. Uh, yeah, I could not seem to get past the paired, but not the connected error. I could not seem to get past the paired, but not connected error. I did get a message on my tablet saying the name of the folder I was trying to send, so some connection was made. Uh, I did some reading about what appears to be a common issue, but I was not able to resolve. I'm sure. I'm not sure which device is the problem since they both rec are both recognized, uh, they both recognize what I'm trying to accomplish. Any suggestions? Thanks, and that's from Ray. Well, I would say kind of like my old adage that some people say I should have as my uh, signature in the forums, you know, boot to a Linux live CD kind of option. We're going to take it the other way. To take 
operating system out of the equation, try it on a Windows computer. Wow. Number one. I, I, well, you know. You I know, get, hey, you got to do what you got to do. And that means one of two things. One, your Linux Mint is not configured correctly. Probably not the case that you can connect everything. Two, that application was specifically designed to interact with the Windows operating system. Gotcha. Um, I would ask what application he's using. I do have a functioning laptop with Bluetooth someplace in this house. So I can try it myself, see if I can get it working. Also, what version of Android are you on? Because there's different versions everywhere. If you're running a Samsung device, I feel sorry for you. <laughs> well, there you go, Ray. That's sage advice from the door. Yeah. Um, I wanted to hurry up and mention a couple things. Um, one, Linux Format Magazine. It might be a real magazine. I don't think it is. I think it's an internet-only magazine. Okay. Um, if you go to linuxformat.com, uh, there's an archive link. It, it, I don't think it's on the main page. It's kind of buried. But these are all the publicly available um, PDFs available for this magazine. Sweet. Actually, I think it is a magazine. Um, full PDFs of every magazine are only available to subscribers. I see. So this did this alone can tell you whether or not you think you need to buy this subscription. <laughs> it's like a trial. Yeah, I can tell you this is one of the most wide-ranging topics, but informative um, sites and content they have. It's very wide-ranging. This isn't like an Ubuntu-specific magazine. This isn't a Red Hat magazine. But a lot of the issues, things they bring up, really are not specifically geared toward one distro. Like... Uh, Antivirus software they test AVG, Avira Pro, Clam, Sophos, Clam, TK, Avast, Bitdefender. Why? Blah, blah, blah. For, for Linux? Glad you asked that. <laughs> um, here's the gimmick. Like I said in the beginning of this, Linux administrators make more money per hour, per task, per job, per anything than Windows administrators. Per statistics, right? Yeah. And the reason a Linux computer would run antivirus software is not to protect their operating system. The reason a Linux server would run antivirus software is not to protect the Linux server. It's to be a good neighbor, quote unquote. You wouldn't want me to have poisonous gas bellowing out my house of every window and every door. If I'm you know, um, immune to it, but it kills all my neighbors off. Right. I mean, this it, is it, true. It, this is true. It's, it, it's not me being a good neighbor. So the logic is Linux servers that in any shape or way come into contact with Windows computers or my Linux laptop, if I constantly stick a USB drive into a Windows computer, what if my Windows computer is infected? I stick it into here. I copy an infected file off, and then I took another USB drive in, or I email it to another friend who's running Windows. Right. It's better in the world playground atmosphere for Linux to be running antivirus. Now, if I'm just sitting in my house, and I never connect anything to a Windows computer, and I never really send email attachments, you know, I use Gmail, I deem it virtually 100% un unnecessary, but you want to make money off this thing. You want to make sure you know everything possible to help support a enterprise. And real true enterprises are heterogeneous. If I said, I can't believe I said that right. They're going to have somebody running Mac. They're going to have somebody running Windows. They're going to have somebody running Linux. I've never seen a true major company not run two or three operating systems. Hmm. That's very interesting. Now, so the, these are if, made for Linux and they run on Linux? These, yeah. Mm -hmm. They're Linux versions. They're not running in Wine or anything. Nope, they're running in Linux. Some of them are free. Some of them are free for personal use. Uh, the one that honestly gets phenomenal marks 
in all of the Windows testings, because that's where you want to test it, Bitdefender is very, very highly rated. Get out of here. On, on the global scale of things, like, honestly, Norton always gets first or second. Um, actually, I'll say second or third. The number one is some weird antivirus no one's ever heard of or bought. Really? It's actually a hybrid of Kaspersky and Avast or something. So it costs 80 bucks a year to run. So nobody runs it. Um, Norton is always up there by the tippity, tippity, tippity top. I'll say that. Bitdefender is always right up there with them. In the ones that people use that they think they're doing their customers favors by giving them a vast Avera, right. AVG, Microsoft Security Essentials, the highest they rate is like number six. Hmm. Yeah, all honesty, they don't rate very high. Bitdefender, Kaspersky, Norton, they all honestly do rank high. Hmm. I personally still can't wipe the scar of Norton off. I need a little bit more time, <laughs> you know? but okay. I know, okay. but I know it has gotten eons better. I, 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 I know that, but I still can't. That's cool. Hey, I, I, I would do the same thing if it hurt you that deep. <laughs> it just pissed me off so bad. <laughs> and any application that you would uninstall and then have to run an uninstaller after the uninstall, you know, what's going on here? Yeah. Good point. Are good you drinking, is that Barks? It's good. Yeah, it's Scott Bite. <laughs> Let me see. Well, that was my last uh, email, Dor. Wow. Okay. Quick side thing, then. I got this. Oh, you book bought that? I, I saw that at the store. It's a thick book here, man. You could seriously hurt like a semi large rat. Door, with this thing. Door's holding it's, up. Uh, it's called, is it, what's it called? A bun, something Ubuntu. Ubuntu Unleashed. Ubuntu Unleashed. You bought the 2011 book. edition, Sweet. I believe. Oh, it's a sand, now, sand book. Yeah. Now, if you can read this up here. Ubuntu 10.10 on DVD. Free upgrade to Ubuntu 11.04. Oh, free. It's always free. I don't understand what they're saying. Okay. I understand they're trying to sell a book. I know. Well, I'm going to say this right now. I am giving this book away to the Podnuts listener who sends us the best period email doesn't matter what the email is it can be the best question it can be the best situation it can be the best advice it can be the best anything it all depends on what me and steve think seems to be the best yeah. but it can't be i love you you guys are great that doesn't cut it no just you have to just send at the something very with, end right exactly you have to send something with a little meat a little Something I can stick my teeth. That's in. a hell of a contest because that's a hell of a book. That ain't cheap. Is Honestly, it? I paid fifty for it, and you can get it right now for Amazon for I think seven bucks. No, it's unbelievably cheap on Amazon. They must have had an overrun. Seven here, bucks is going to be more than the shit. It's going to be the shipping cost on that. Well, they're not going to have to pay it. I'll pay it. This is a very generous contest being offered by the door. Take them up well, on it. I honestly want to encourage people to interact because we have had some very smart and very nice people interact with the show. And I'm not trying to sell you guys short. You know, if we get one email and the best email was one we just read or one from last week, I'll give it to that person. All right. I care. I'm going to put a time limit on it, though. I'm going to say. Tomorrow. Not tomorrow. <laughs> no, go ahead. I'm going to say beginning of March. Beginning of March is when we're going to stop and we're going to decide which one we like the best. And some people say restricted within the U.S. You know, it's going, put it this way, it ain't going to cost me as much money as I'm going to save from betterpctech.com to ship this book out. So I don't care if you're in New Zealand or Yugoslavia. You know, if you're in Iraq, I might ask for a couple dollars, <laughs> you know, because it might be more expensive. I, 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 I don't know. <laughs> But but I'll ship it anywhere. It doesn't matter. There you go. From the door. Yeah. That's awesome. It's um, a good contest. I'm gonna I'm gonna send can I send can I submit one? Sure. Okay. I was actually gonna offer you the book first, but I kinda forgot before the show. That's oh that's okay. That's fine. 
Okay. Good. I was looking at it saying, man, I wish I, I want that book. But now it's too late. I'll say it is, <laughs> from what I've read, it is a good book. But uh, I'll say, yeah. you know, OCD, ADHD. Mm-mm, nope. Can't get more than 20, 30 pages in. <laughs> Dora, I don't need a book. I got you here with the podcast. Okay. I'll say this is a very good book. It does come with installation media. So if you're in a part of the country where all you have is dial up service, you know, you put that as a good email. I'll send you this and you'll get that install CD for free. Send us, where could they send us emails? Mail at pondus.com is the one you really should be sending it to, but you can send it to door door geek at gmail.com door door geek at pondus.com, or you can call up and leave us a voicemail. That works just as well. Just make sure we can get back with you. So a voicemail account as an entry. Any way they can officially get in contact. Okay. If you send me a PM in the forums, that don't count. If you send me a tweet, that don't count. Okay, so voicemails and emails get, are equally weighted. Not one's better than the other. It's the content that counts. Mm-hmm. Now, hypothetically, it's a voicemail from Ricardo in Quebec. If you don't leave us contact information, we'll now choose the winner. But you better get back with us pretty soon. <laughs> That's all I'll say. Because patience would run thin. That's all I'll say. <laughs> the voicemail number, if you guys do want to call, is 7076-POD-NUT. Please call and leave us a message. Right, and then Thank just you. Two, two at the end quickies. Anyone who's had any length of time in Linux has experienced full-screen flash or full-screen video for some things just not working right. Doesn't work clean, doesn't work crisp. I wonder who I that had, is. Well, I'll say this. I've had severe issues with Hulu and Boxy and other applications running full screen. Maybe it's me. Maybe it's me. <laughs> I don't think it is, but maybe it's me. Uh, there's a handy dandy tool that really exponentially gives you control over comp is. Uh, it's called Compass Config Dash Settings Dash Manager. Uh, in most of the distributions, you can basically go to the appearance application or you know graphic settings, and you can say effects equal none, effects equal uh, normal, or high, and that's all the choices you get. If you install uh, Compass Configuration Manager, let me do this, Steve. As soon as I remember how to hit the button correctly, because I keep forgetting, I can send you live full screen videos of what's going on here. Um, Beautiful. This, this application gives you so insane level of details for things you want to do. And I love the fact they have a filter up here in the corner. So if you want to get that 3D cube effect, you can just type cube. And there's desktop cube and rotate cube. Then you can go in and you can change things. Uh, the setting I want to talk about is desktop, enhanced desktop zoom. What this is, this gives you the ability to on the fly, just zoom right in. And right now, my entire screen basically just says zoom in zoom in uh zoom in zoom out zoom out just like you're seeing it on the uh, live stream Uh, this is how i say lennox is built for presentations because if i'm in the middle of a presentation and i want to emphasize something over here on a windows box you can draw a box around it you can take a laser pointer point to it but in lennox i can actually do that how did you do that um with um uh, with the enhanced zoom desktop enabled, I just hold down the Windows key or the super key as they call it in Linux. We all know it's a Windows key because that's what it is a picture of on virtually every keyboard we buy. And then you just scroll your mouse wheel. That's it. And in this, you can say what the zoom factor is because with every click, it's going to go in a certain amount. So you can make it go in more or less. The minimum zoom factor. Uh, the mouse behavior, uh, you know, is wow. the, all those feet, all those tabs are features for this zoom. 
Yeah. Jeez. Specified zoom, zoom specific level one, two, three, four, because you can say, um, there's a special way where I can say, hit a button combination and it will go to this zoom level, quote unquote. Then there's zoom area, panting, uh, tilting, pan left zoom, pan right zoom, focus tracking, auto scale threshold, animation. You can have the animation go a whole bunch faster. And then when I go back, it's just going to zoom in quicker. You know? Right. And this, with this, you can control anything that you can imagine on your desktop computer magnifier desktop wall expose which is the mac like looking at all the wow, screens wow pretty um and they're all in basically like um hotkey switchers there's like um shift alt and tab so you can go through your windows purdy in a purdy fashion and this was way before windows 7 let me just make that clear seriously Oh, years. This was honestly out when I first used Linux. It was already out, and that was 2005, That's 2006. Awesome. You know, um, so, so uh, this is all Compass um, options? Yeah. Oh, yeah, and it keeps going, and it keeps going. Oh, my gosh, Down, man. down, down. Like, um, water effects, honestly, I think, I can't remember what this combination was. But you could turn your desktop into like a sheet of water. Done all kind of crazy stuff. The wobbly windows, everybody knows you can affect how that is. There's the cube, annotate, screenshot, images, resize, scale, video playback options. So you can come in here and all it is YV12 color space. Oh. Means something to somebody. <laughs> I don't know what it means. That's so cool, man window rules you can really get into how your windows act like um there's a uh snap feature where you can have you the corners either snap and click into place on the edges or against other windows right or you or you can have it to where it just doesn't snap at all mine right now don't really snap so this is the kind of application where if you get into i highly encourage you to remember what you did and do things in baby steps right. because you, you, you can make your desktop virtually unusable, not unusable. Yeah, no doubt in that. See, like, and I like this, if I hit something and it conflicts with something first, I get this, do you want to enable? And then I get plug in desktop wall, which is also provided. I'm going to say disable desktop wall. So it's like it, it, it understands uh, conflicts. It tries to keep track of everything for you. Yeah, so it tries to make sure things don't rotate. How do you do the rotate queue? Um, this is like the wall. If I just... Wow. Um, Control-Alt and then click and drag. That's so that can... cool. So and, awesome. And this is where I say, like, these kind of effects run better on normal standard non-powerful hardware huh. or if you just have a quote-unquote crappy intel graphics yeah on board this will run better most of the time than the newest high-end hd nvidia 400 hundred dollar video card that's so cool i love compass and, and this is a four and a half year old laptop and there was no hesitation there was no things popping up there was no errors. There was no anything that happened when I just enabled that. Now it's the first time I enabled that on that. And that's the computer laptop. running Skype. Yep. Damn, it's awesome. Yeah. Sweet, Mister. So if you want to be able to go up to your friend running Windows and say, "Can your computer do this and do something mind-numbingly crazy?" <laughs> you need uh, sudo apt get install compass config dash settings dash manager. I did post it in the chat, by the way. Cool. Sudo I, apt, sudo apt da, dash get install compiz, or compass config dash settings dash manager. Yep. Okay. That's the uh, holy grail, if you will. Okay. It's getting that working. Um, and very last, but absolutely not least, 
this is me saying to myself, this has to get done. <laughs> this is going to get done. <laughs> it's just a question of how long it's going to take. Right. Um, I had a special deal from my hosting provider, like eight ninety nine for one year. I got the domain podbuntu.com. <laughs> um, my goal was last show to have the ISO up available for download. Let's just say getting called from work twice for sick kids and then once for my kid gushing five puddles of blood the size of a big laptop on the floor because another kid slammed him in his head with a toy. My time has been kind of stressed. Damn. But I am going to post the ISO. Now, here's the gimmick with Podbuntu. I would like to have a small community of people because, honestly, I can't do this all by myself. This is what I'm figuring out. To help administer the sites, the site with me, but also people I trust with direct feedback of what should we try to get in this, what is not what is pointless to put in this? What would you like to see in this? You know, what's cool? Um, and to help manage, because I would like to have some kind of forms up here so people can ask questions about it. You know what I mean? But this is where I think this is going to be done just because, A, if Drupal's good enough for Scott Moulton, it's good enough for me. <laughs> Drupal yeah. 7? Is the site up? It, yeah, the there is something up. It's very plain, and there's really not much there. It has, it's green, and it says Podbuntu, but that's about it. Is it a uh, Drupal seven or no? It's just, oh yeah, it is Drupal seven, right? No, it's Drupal six. They didn't have a one click installer for Drupal seven. Uh, that's cool. So we're taking to take your time on this. Anybody oh, yeah. and and there's no, there's absolutely no rush for this. No rush, but you know, listen to door if you guys want to help contribute to Podbuntu. Which, if nobody knows, is basically a Podnuts um, tailored Linux distro. Yeah, I mean, it, it's going to have certain applications in there. Like one, I'm going to say it's called, oh, I want to say it's called CHTPSW, which secretly come to find out you can easily install virtually any Linux distribution. And it's the backbone for things like NT registry um what's it called nt registry password reset yeah something like that yeah pc login now trinity all these programs that can blank passwords surprise they're using an open source solution at the <laughs> end really? so you know that's the kind of thing i want to have in there also because of all those antiviruses have an antivirus on there what i ask you is safer than taking an infective drive out of a Windows computer, sticking it in your desktop running Podbuntu, and running these antivirus solutions. Yeah, such on a it. good idea. Such a good idea, Dor. That's why yeah. we pay you the big bucks. <laughs> yeah. <know> that. And <laughs> it's going to allow for instant, easy, direct access to Podnuts data, media, and information. I love it, man. Um, just keep telling us what you need, what's needed and wanted, and uh, we will try to comply. Now, I'm going to put up in the next day or two the ability for people to join. Um, and I just want people who really think they have, you know, even an hour a week to devote to booting the live CD or installing it on spare hardware and just toying with it. Tell me something that irks you. Tell me something, man, you know, it can do this and do this, but I need it to do that. Right. It doesn't have to be computer tech related either, but it just so happens that's the majority of the, of the audience we have. <laughs> um, so I really want to try to cater to the Podnuts audience. I don't want people randomly jumping in from, I don't know, um, um, different I'm quarters. Of, different try, quarters. Try, I'm trying to think of the Paul Therott Windows Super Site. I don't want you people hopping in from there. You know? Okay. <laughs> okay, that's a deal. They're banned. They are banned. <laughs> All clicks coming from there will be redirected. <laughs> that's sweet, man. 
Thanks for buying that domain. This is going to be pretty cool. Looking yeah. forward to it's it. Be, it's going to be fun. And uh, because Ubuntu is, I don't want to say simpler, it's going to be, I think, easier to say, to do these little tweaks here and there, here and there. The first thing I got to do is from last week, I got to put Orta um, icon theme on there. Oh, that's going to be the theme? Sweet. It has to. That's too pretty to pass up. All right. That's pretty awesome. Psyched. Cool. And I, I want to thank the email we got today. I, I wasn't going to say all the emails, but we got an email. So <laughs> one email is good. Absolutely. And uh, you know, we're, again, you know where to reach us. If um, if you want to send more emails, mailpodnuts.com or, um, gosh, you have so many, door to geek at gmail.com or door to geek at podnuts.com, wherever you guys want to send it, just send it to us. Yeah. Voicemail 7076podnut. Anything else, door, before we end off? Um, seriously, and if you, if you just know somebody who's a PC tech, you tell them they need, that their time is more valuable than they, you know, treat it. They need to go to betterpctech.com. I agree. Betterpctech.com. Go there. And that's so, and I want to thank everybody for watching, listening, streaming. That's going to be it for Linux for the rest of us for tonight. We will see you next time.